and today I'm here to talk to you about uh, ROS2 and uh, Zeno. So, um, if I, I'm, I'm the ROS2 uh, project lead, as mentioned, um, I've been working on ROS2 for the last eight years. If you've interacted with ROS at all in the last eight years, um, you've probably interacted with C the Lancet on GitHub, so that's me. All right, but today I'm going to be talking to you about um, ROS2 communication. So, um, what I like to say is that ROS2 is an open source distributed programming framework with a robotics flavor, right? Um, and being a distributed programming framework, um, the comms mechanism is really, really important, right? We have many, uh, the, the basic things that need to work are, are pub sub and um, remote procedure calls. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, some more depth on that, but those are the basic things that have to work and they really have to work very well. In ROS1, uh, we did this with a custom protocol called TCP ROS. And TCP ROS worked by having a central uh, ROS core, which was used only for discovery. So uh, nodes would come up, they would um, contact the, the ROS core, find out where their peers were, and then they would direct connect to their peers. Um, so that whole discovery process was, was custom. The, and then the, the serialization uh, of the data onto the, on, into bytes was, was custom, and then the framing on, on the network was custom. And that actually worked very well, but um, you know, because everything was custom there, uh, you know, we had problems with we didn't have enough tooling. Um, it could be hard to sort of debug that stack. So in ROS2, what we decided to do is to make this more of a, of a pluggable framework. And, and uh, so that led to what the ROS2 stack that uh, looks like today. And this stack, so at the very top layer, you have the user application, right? And that user application uh, interacts, it is, you know, your sensing and your, uh, you know, your controls or whatever, whatever it is you're going to be doing. That application interacts with what we call the client libraries, which is the next layer down. Th those client libraries are written in um, whatever uh, language you want, right? Um, in the core, we support C++ and Python, but there are Java, there's Rust, there's all kinds of, kinds of other things. And at that layer is where um, you, you're able to create, you know, create the publishers, create the subscribers. Um, anything you need to do is, is uh, done at that layer, uh, or, or is implemented at that layer. But what we also found in ROS1 was that um, there were a lot of commonalities right, between the implementation uh, in C++ and Python. Um, and they needed to do a lot of the same core things. So um, what we ended up doing is we ended up introduced this layer called RCL. And that's the next layer down. The RCL layer um, it introduces common concepts. It's common code that, that can be shared. But the RCL layer itself doesn't know actually how to put things onto the network or to get things from the network. So that's that, that, that next layer down, um, which is called the RMW. And that's what I'm mostly going to talk about today. So the RMW is the ROS middleware layer. And that's what allows you to actually put data on the network or get data from the network. And uh, what that really is is an abstract C API. And anything that, um, any, any sort of network protocol that can implement that C API can be uh, plugged right into Rust 2 at, at runtime, <coughs> excuse me, or at build time. So um, as of today, what we have is we have um, three uh, major uh, uh, RMW implementations. We have Fast DDS, which is our, our default in Rust 2. We have Cyclone DDS, which is another one, and then uh, Connects DDS. And those all, those all work. Um, and uh, you know we have thousands of users using Rust2 with, with DDS. And DDS was chosen in, back in about a decade ago when Rust2 was first getting going. Um, you know, people looked, the, the team looked at, the, um, at, at what was available at the time, and DDS actually just, uh, fit the bill pretty well. So that's why DDS was chosen. And you know, it, it does work, and it can be made to work. However, I will say that the big problem with DDS is that it, it can have some problems getting started. And um, so first of all is that um, DDS uses UDP multicast for discovery. UDP multicast is great because it means you don't have any, that central ROS core like, I, like uh, ROS1 has. You can just launch uh, process A and process B, they'll just discover each other. The problem with UDP multicast comes when you get to complex or networks or Wi-Fi. So complex networks um, can, can have UDP multicast disabled for policy reasons or for performance reasons. Corporate networks often disable it. Um, Wi-Fi disables it for, uh, sometimes, depending on your Wi-Fi router, uh, can disable it for performance reasons. And of course, right, the problem here ends up being that you, when it works, it's great, but when it doesn't work, your nodes just don't communicate and you don't know why, right? And it can be things that are out of your control. It's not just your computer, it can be uh, network policy that's preventing it. <clears throat> the second problem that, UD, that um, DDS uh, suffers from is, is it's a fully connected network, right? So. Um, 
DDS really wants every single entity in the, in the network to know about every other entity. And the reasons for that is that um, if your network gets partitioned for some reason, you know, there's, a, there's a, some, some, some sort of break somewhere, DD, your portion of the network can still con continue to communicate. And that's a very important property of DDS as part of the design. The problem with that is that you end up with lots of discovery traffic on startup because everything has to discover everything else. And um, you know, particularly when you get to complex ROS graphs um, on, on networks, you can really uh, hammer the network quite a lot. Another problem that DDS suffers from is um, that it uses UDP datagrams to deliver data. And you know, most protocols these days are, are using TCP, but um, you know, DDS uses UDP because it, gets, it gives it a lot of control over quality of service, right? It can determine whether things are uh, reliable or best effort, right? We're just gonna try it once, and, and if it doesn't get there, it doesn't get there. Um, and and that's, it, that's a nice uh, property of it. However, the modern internet is not really that well optimized for UDP. So for instance, on Linux, the default buffer sizes for UDP is only 256K. And that means that if you're sending large images or point clouds or other large data over the network, over UDP, it can be hard for the subscriber to keep up, right? If it's not keeping up and draining that 256K buffer fast enough, you'll start losing data and have to retransmit more and, and cause more data on, on the network. So, so that's all tunable, that can be made to work, but out of the box it doesn't work that well. And then uh, DDS also has relatively high framing overhead, and so this is the opposite end of the spectrum from, from the, the, the large uh, messages. For small messages, you wanna send something small very frequently, um, you know, the framing overhead then becomes a significant portion of what you're sending, right? You're just sending metadata all the time. And um, DDS actually, for what it is, has relatively high framing overhead. So if you're sending that data, that high frequency data, little data all the time, you're just spending a lot of it just sending the DDS metadata. <laughs> the next point there is then just like, it's basically a combination of all of the above. Because of all of those, those problems that I just talked about, you know, DDS tends not to work that well over Wi-Fi or complex networks. And then finally, that last point is very raw specific, but that, that RMWC API is really meant to be abstract and meant to be able to be used for any network um, or any networking technology. But because all of our current implementations are DDS, a lot of those details, uh, not a lot, but we've done a relatively good job, but those details can leak through the, through the RMW interface, and so um, an RMW API be can become very DDS-like even though we didn't intend that to be the case. So because of all of those problems, um, we decided uh, about a year ago that we wanted to introduce a new uh, RMW into the default installation of ROS2 that would help address most of this. So the way we went about this um, is, is uh, we did two major things, right? We generate requirements. And the requirements are what are the things that, that we, we know we need uh, this, this networking uh, system to do. So first thing is that we looked at the known ROS2 use cases, right? We know that uh, anonymous pub sub has to work well. We know that RPC has to work well, et cetera, et cetera. These are things we just know um, the, the ROS core, core team knows from having worked on ROS for years and years. We also did uh, targeted interviews with key stakeholders in the ROS community. So we talked to the navigation developers, we talked to the MoveIt developers you know, for, for IK and things like that, and talked to them about what, what problems they saw and what problems that um, you know, they, their users were having with, with the ROS2 core. And then we also sent out a, a broad uh, survey to the ROS community to get their feedback, what, you know, what, what was happening, what were they seeing, what were the problems that they were running into, what, what, what networks they were using. So that's the first major thing, was gathering the, that set of requirements. Second half was surveying the, what middlewares are currently available, because you know, since DDS was chosen a decade ago, things have, have obviously changed. And so um, this, this is not a full list. Um, the full list is in the paper, which I'll point to in a minute. But this is some notable entries of things we did end up looking at. Um, so Zeno, which is what we're talking about mostly today, is, is, a, is a relatively new protocol, but um, had a lot of interest from the community. We looked at uh, TCP ROS. So right, it would be possible to slot the ROS1 protocol back in under ROS2 as the comms protocol. Um, MQTT we looked at, which is very, very popular in uh, IoT. Um, we looked at 0MQ, which is uh, popular in the community, also used by uh, Gazebo to do communication, so that would be interesting for that reason. We looked at OPC UA, which is uh, very uh, widely used in the industrial automation uh, industry. And then we looked at Apache Kafka, which is a uh, distributed uh, you know, networking synchronization protocol. 
So at the end of the day, we, what we ended up doing right, was comparing uh, each of those middlewares uh, against the requirements. We, we did a comparison of about 20 or 25 of them, and you know, figuring out how well each, each middleware met the requirements. The, the link to the paper is there. You can go read the full report if you want to see all of the middlewares we looked at and all of the, the criteria. But ultimately, what we ended up doing was we, we chose Zeno as, our, uh, as, as what we wanted to work on. So Zeno is a relatively new protocol, as I mentioned. The core protocol is written in Rust, but it has C and C++ bindings. Um, it's an open source Eclipse project, largely developed by a company called Zetascale. Um, so uh, some of the, the good things about Zeno, right, it has much smaller framing overhead, and that comes from the, uh, the people who, a lot of the people who work on uh, Zeno also used to work on DDS, so they know uh, a lot of the problems with it. Um, Zeno has far less discovery traffic than, than DDS. And in point of fact, the, so, so Zeno goes out of its way to reduce discovery traffic to the bare minimum. And in point of fact, this causes some, a little bit of trouble with Rust 2, which I'll talk about in, in a couple slides. Um, uh, Zeno delivers data using TCP by default, so we, we avoid uh, a lot of those UDP configuration problems. And then finally, it uses uh, these things called routers, which can discover each other. And, and uh, I'll just talk a little bit more about uh, Zeno and the routers and their topologies. So Zeno can work in a number of different ways. Um, one way, it can actually work in multicast UDP mode, much like, uh, much like DDS can. But given the problems that we've, had, you know, we've, we've seen our, user have, our users have in the past, we decided that that is not, is not the best default for us. So that means that we're having each, um, each host on a network run a router. And what routers can do is they can be configured in a number of ways. One of the ways they can be configured is much like ROS1, where um, you just do discovery through the router. So you come up, you contact the router, you find where your peers are, and then you direct connect to each other. And that's the default that we're, we're actually using in ROS2. You can also have, use routers to uh, deliver data in fully brokered mode. So that means that um, you, you come up, use the router for discovery, but then you also send all your data through the router, and the router delivers it where it needs to go. That can be very nice in, in that the router has built-in abilities to do things like compression, to do um, rate limiting, um, all kinds of uh, things like that. It can also, um, and, and it, that just, but it does, that adds a lot of extra latency, right? So, so out of the box, we're going to do one host, one router per host with um, discovery only. Uh, that's for maximum performance. But uh, you know, users can configure their network however they want. So uh, where are we now? So uh, we have a mostly feature complete, what we call RMW Zeno CPP, right? It, had, it uses the Zeno protocol instead of DDS. It requires the user to run a, a, a Zeno router. Um, and just uh, so, like right, working features, right, we have so one of the APIs in the RMW is called RMW Create Publisher. That, at the end of the day, will just turn around and call Z Declare Publisher, which is the Zeno API to create a publisher. Subscriber similarly has RMW Create Subscription, ends up calling Z Declare Subscriber. Um, we have services, um, you know, RMW Create Service ends up calling Z Declare Queryable. Um, uh, RPC is called Queryable in, in Zeno terminology, so that's that. And then uh, the other thing is that we have working is the graph cache, right? So as I mentioned before, you know, Zeno really goes far out of its way to reduce discovery traffic. And that's really nice, but Rust 2 wants to be able to introspect the network. So uh, our users really want to be able to do Rust 2 topic lists and see all the topics that are available in the network, or Rust 2 node lists and see the nodes that are available in the network. And <coughs> excuse me. And so the difference, uh, we, we had to paper over this gap, right, um, between what Ross really wants to be able to do in terms of introspection, what Zeno does in terms of keeping discovery traffic down. And we've done that. So we, ha we use these um, tokens that are attached to every entity. When entities come up, they, they broadcast their token out, and, and um, every, everything on the network can find them as, as Ross expects. So that means that our RMW implementation, it has higher discovery overhead than maybe Zeno uh, uh, Pure does, but it still has much, much lower discovery overhead than DDS. And so this is overall still a huge win, even though we had to introduce a little bit more discovery traffic uh, for Ross. And then we support um, events and, and quality of service uh, and, and all that stuff. So uh, what's next is um, we're going to... 
trying to make RMW Zeno a tier one support RMW. We have a tier support, so to have it um, tier one support means we're gonna run it nightly on CI, um, ship to far, uh, part of the default install, working on all our platforms. Um, to get there, we need to finish, fix all the failing tests. The Rust2 core has thousands of tests, um, and uh, RMW Zeno is passing maybe 75% or 80% of them right now. We need to fix, make them all work. Um, we need to implement security. It is the one missing feature we haven't had yet. Um, that is now possible with uh, Zeno 1.0, which was just released last week. So it has the APIs we need. So we need to uh, actually go and implement that. We now need to we need to make it work on Windows, which is the one platform we haven't gotten uh, haven't gotten it working on yet. And then we need to improve the story about the around the routers, right? So. Um, when you come up and the router is not running, what, what happens, right? How do we uh, you know, uh, communicate to that to the user, tell the user they need to start the router, how does the user start the router, et cetera, et cetera. So um, for more information, um, all of our uh, development is happening in the open. The, whole, the, the project is all open source, as is uh, uh, Zeno itself. It's at github.com slash ros2 slash rmwzeno. Um, we're looking for testing and feedback. So if you're a ROS user and you've, you've uh, run into problems with DDS in the past, um, you know, we encourage you to, to try out Zeno here. Um, give us uh, feedback, testing, uh, anything like that. We're, we're happy to do it. And we're you know, really working towards making this a tier one, because we really want this to be part of the default ROS. And install. And that's it. Um, and I'll take, at this point, I'll take any questions you have. Thank you. We, yes. do, we do have time for uh, one question. One question? Had All right. Up first, so we'll try to get on the mic this time. All right. Yeah, sorry. Um, so you're rolling this into current ROS deployments. Do you have kind of a cutover date where it'll become the new default? So we haven't talked yet about making it the default. Um, for, the first step was always to make it a tier one. And then once, once it's a tier one, I think at least we're going to have one release where it's a tier one support, and we'll see what users uh, want to do with it. And then we'll have to have a discussion as a community about whether we want to make that a tier, uh, the default. Uh, yep, yep. Great, excellent. Uh, we'll do, take one more question here. Oh, Emerson. Um, so how dependent is the, the RMW Zeno implementation on any newer changes in the RMW API? Say someone wanted to try it on, on a Humble, um, for right. example. Right. So good question. So um, it does not work on Humble currently. It works on Iron and later currently. What? So What uh, if some intrepid uh, former core contributor was determined? How hard do you think that would be? It's probably not that hard, but um, it, it does not work out of the box right now. Okay. So it's, okay. Poss probably possible, but. Great, thank yeah. you. <laughs> sure.